What's going on, you loyal listeners? Thank you for tuning in to the L Squared Podcast. I'm your host here, Luke Larson, and joining me today, as per the unusual, my lovely and loquacious special guest will be assisting me in leisurely launching you into levity, director of the new film Paper Geese, showing at the South Dakota Film Festival right now, Elizabeth Chatelaine. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And... You know, like you and I were just talking about, I saw your film Paper Geese at the festival this year, and I loved it. Um, it's it's beautiful, and it's it's a little bit haunting <laughs> for me anyway. Yeah. Uh, and and it has a really unique perspective. But I'll I'll read the synopsis here for for the loyal listeners; so they can have an idea. So. Um, After an unsuccessful goose hunt, a young girl grapples with seeing her father in a new light. I always appreciate a synopsis. Yeah. (laughs) It's so hard to write, you know? (laughs) Yeah, that Um, one's very short. It leaves a lot to the imagination. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, So I want to start with what was the inspiration for this film? Uh, Yeah, so actually it was um, inspired by my sister and my dad like their relationship. Um, my sister used to go hunting with him. Um, we all grew up like, you know, cause or I'm from Fargo, North Dakota originally. Mm. And, um, you know, in the summer we would always go to the lakes and like go fishing. And, mm-hmm. you know, my dad was like a, you know, Eagle scout or whatever. And so oh, like yeah. he loved fishing and hunting and everything. And, um, yeah. And my sister, my oldest sister, um, you know, really was a very, very much a tomboy, like really, Mm -hmm. again, like loved fishing and doing these things. Um, But at a certain point, when she got old enough to start like going hunting with my dad, which was probably around like 11 or 12 or something. um, You know, I think it just, after a couple of times doing it, um, she just felt so much like guilt about you know killing the animals and um and that was what was such a conflict for her is that she really really wanted my dad's approval um but at the same time she really didn't want to do um this thing that was sort of like a bonding thing for them but you know it kind of turned out to sour because she you know loved animals so much and it was so difficult for her to watch them being killed and like in kind of a brutal way as well because yeah most of the time they were hunting with a with groups and like they would just shoot down like how you know tons mm. of bees and you know and and each one would be like oh well that one's not dead okay well we have to like you know um like kill it by cracking its neck or whatever you know and it's yeah. like that's some that's a really like traumatic thing I feel like to see as like yeah. 11 year old so so yeah that's where that's where the inspiration came from really yeah i absolutely related to that my my dad wasn't as much into it but um i had a couple uncles that were really into it and they would always try and take me and yeah i was always the kid from a small age that loved animals you know i think my favorite movies growing up were like the jungle book and and the lion king and my my sister used to I would get sick of playing house with her my older sister so she would change the game from house to like jungle to make it with animals so that I would play oh, with it nice. yeah very smart um yeah. but so and so it was just like one of those things where I thought you know I'll grow up to be like a zookeeper or a vet or something you know and so when you go out hunting, you know, it's just a whole different, yeah, especially when you're a kid, it is traumatic and you don't really have a lot of experience dealing with death, especially when you are like, well, animals like are friends, you know, and then then seeing it brutally up close and everything is, is rough. But I love that, you know, the aspect of trying to connect, you know, with, with your parents, I feel like we all kind of, have to you know, struggle with that at some you know at some point yeah. in our lives and and yeah it was just very very well done but um it I, I also just loved how personal it all felt you know and and I was gonna ask like did you find any like because I was thinking watching this like did you find any like newfound 
or you know a new way to empathize with with your dad by kind of writing this character um yeah i mean my dad is a very complex person um he like in the film he's a doctor he's not a mm. he's not a surgeon but um he was an anesthesiologist and you know that there's always kind of that discrepancy of like you know doctors save people but like you're killing animals like it's just you know like there's something that's sort of you know, I think I, I recognize sort of the oxymoron there, you know, of like those two things. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot to be explored in the, in the father character. And it's interesting, you know, um, I've had a couple of people tell me like, oh, I really don't like the dad. And I'm like, oh, like, uh, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> like, I, I mean, it's not that I like, I mean, it's not a great guy, of course, you know, yeah. but like, you know, he's just, like, he was brought up a certain way, like, you know, I think mm -hmm. a lot of our parents, especially in the Midwest, um, you know, it's kind of mm -hmm. like the stoicism, and like, you know, you don't cry about stuff, and you don't, you know, yeah. like, you're kind of, like, really tough, or like, you're supposed to be, and then my dad also grew up in this kind of militaristic type, like, setting, and so, um, like with his father and, and mother. And so I think, you know, the, the father character is someone that, you know, he, he does want to like bond with his daughter and he, he does want her to do these things with him. And, um, you know, he thinks he's teaching her stuff, but at the same time, he's, he's like his, his heart is kind of in the right place but it's really comes out not in the, <laughs> you know like not in the right way or um yeah. and then also I also just really wanted to you know kind of point to this the task of being a doctor it's like you know anytime you go into surgery something could happen you know mm -hmm. and so like the type of stress that doctors are under like is uh you know, something that, like, us, you know, people who just, you know, do something like making films or whatever, like, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's just something we don't have to deal with every day. Like, we don't have to deal with death or people being in pain or things like yeah. that. And that's something that, you know, doctors have to see a lot. And, you know, and I do think that there's a lot of self-medicating that happens, like, with alcohol mm -hmm. or, you know, maybe some other drugs, like, even though doctors really aren't supposed to, it's, it's like, you know, like with all the stress and all of that trauma really that they're taking in, mm -hmm. like it, it makes sense. And I, I hope that people are sympathetic to that, you know, aspect of it. But. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, I mean, that's definitely what I took away from it. I, I wrote this down. I thought very, I thought, it seemed like an empathetic exercise to really like, I was definitely empathizing with him because I um, had a father that was similar to that as well. And, and yeah, it's hard to, the older you get, the more you, you realize that, you know, they're just people and they more or less did the best they could. And, and you know, but yeah, doctors especially have really like have to be able to compartmentalize you know, right. what they do and have that stress, you know, a friend, the, my sometimes co-host of the show, he's getting his PhD right now in, in um, biology. And his, his dad was a doctor and, you know, his dad would love to go compete in bicycle races. So that was kind of his, his break, uh, you know, yeah. but he, he always needed, he always like needed to be doing something, needed to keep his mind on something. And yeah, yeah. you know, it, it makes sense. Cause you know, there, everybody has to have a way, you know, to, to deal with yeah. those. But, um, you know, the, the differences between like the dad compartmentalizing, especially, you know, the, the death that we see throughout the film and then, and then the, that through the eyes of the innocence of the child was was very well done and her her performance was so good yeah she's great <laughs> yeah how'd you find her yeah um so actually yeah we uh i came up to fargo and we did kind of like an open um casting hall and mm. um and yeah i think it was just kind of like this thing that came together my mom 
had randomly been watching like a local show and they had on a casting director or like she wasn't a casting director she was an agent like but in Fargo so I mean like I was like okay like how many agents are there in Fargo and so anyway you know my mom like took down her name and she like sent her sort of the open call that I'd kind of written you know uh sent it to this woman and so the the woman um you know, went ahead and, and sent along, you know, a couple of the girls that were taking, you know, that she was kind of re representing. Um, and yeah, and so Payson came in and she was really, there's sort of, there's specific things that you kind of look for in, in kids, like when you're um, making a film, I've done several films with, with kids and, mm. um, you know, the, the biggest things that you're really looking for is, you know, authenticity is definitely a big mm. one. Um, listening, are they listening to you? Like when you're talking or when you're giving your lines, like that's, you have to, um, you know, make sure that they're, they're attentive to like what's, what's happening. Um, and then also, you know, just kind of their demeanor and like um, how, how how you also interact with their parents because like that's a whole nother dynamic that's just sort of a you know um I mean it, it just it's it's a part of it like if you're gonna cast a kid like you're really casting their parents too so like you know you mm. have to um you know I always would meet with the parents and you know see how they felt about specific things like you know um, it's going to be for a couple of days. She might have to miss some school. Like, you know, are you okay with that? You know, that sort of thing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, like she, she just, what really got me about her is that we did some of the reading, like I had made a script, um, like actually from a different film because this film is like, doesn't have much talking in it. Um, but I gave her, you know, like some lines, you know, to read. And then I did more of a sort of like, um, like an exercise with her where I was like, you know, like, okay, so pretend I'm your dad and I'm about to shoot like a goose, like a, you know, like a, a goose or a bird, you know, that's like, you know, and you love birds, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so try to convince me not to shoot the bird. And so, like, and so she, like, immediately was just, like, don't, no, like, you know, like, just so, like, authentically that I was, like, okay, like, yes, she's, I think she's the one, and um, she looked a little bit younger than what I had uh, imagined in my mind, but, you know, I think that kind of, it made sense as far as, like, um, dealing with death, really, for the first time, like, it makes more sense to have some, a, a child that's, like, she was like nine, I think at the time, like versus, you know, um, you know, we had another really great actress come in, but she was like 14. So she looked like almost too old, like for mm -hmm. that. So we erred sure. on the side of being younger. Um, and, you know, because like, just looking at her, it looks like she looks so innocent, you know? Yeah. So she really doesn't have to do that much to like, you know, <laughs> make you, make you like feel sympathetic or like, okay, you know? So, yeah. um, so yeah, that's kind of how that process happened. And I live in Brooklyn. And so, yeah, I was kind of like going back and forth. I mean, I, I go to North Dakota a lot just to see my family. My hmm. sister still lives, she lives in Moorhead, Minnesota. But um, yeah, I, I still go back quite a bit. And um, almost all of the films that I've made and are writing like are in that area, hmm. the upper Midwest, yeah. Yeah. And so I'm guessing that you left Fargo um, when you yeah. were 18. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I did. Um, yeah, I definitely was one of those people that was like, I'm getting out of Fargo like as soon as possible. So I, yeah, I left when I was 18. I went to college um, in Vermont um, at a place mm. called Middlebury College, um, just like a small liberal arts college. And then I, I lived in India for a year and um taught English and that was like wow. a life-changing experience for sure um and it was kind of there where I I mean I had studied some film actually I was like 
I was like a film studies major, you know, so we did a little bit of production, but not a lot. It was mostly just analyzing films, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and what they say about the politics or like what, whatever's going on, you know, uh, at the time when the films were made. Um, and, and, but there were, there were like a couple of like documentary classes that I was able to take. Um, so once I went to India, like I, it, it just solidified for me. Like I, I want to be able to make films about things. Like, and I really wanted mm. to, and maybe someday I will like, you know, go back and film something there. But like, um, you know, it just kind of cemented for me that I wanted to, to go into film and I felt like I needed more um, production training. So mm. I lived at home like I went at, once I was done with India, I went back to Fargo, which is like a mm. huge thing. <laughs> Obviously, like it's like okay, like very extreme. Um, and I worked at Macy's for a year mm. while I was um, uh, applying for grad schools to do film production. Oh wow! And yeah, and I mean, I'm so glad that I had that that time, like working in like a job like that, because I think it's mm. just really. You know, I don't know. It gives you some, it's like life experience or something, you know? Yeah. And, um, and so then, yeah, I got into the University of Texas in Austin and I mm. did their graduate um, build program there. And that was a combination of documentary and narrative films. And mm. at first I was like dead set. I'm like, I'm going to make documentaries. Like that was, you know, I was... Mm really you know kind of that was my aim and so I only mm. really applied to schools that you know I didn't even apply to like USC or any of those places because I was like that they don't have documentaries so like I just you know applied to the couple of programs that have documentary filmmaking and Austin was one of them so mm. but during that time because it was required that we make some narrative films I started I sort of like also really loved like writing and you know telling stories mm. that way as well mm -hmm. um now like now I work as a as an editor for you know my my salary you know and then mm. I am able to kind of make these um shorter pieces uh you know on my own um using the you know using the funds that I get from yeah editing um yeah so would you recommend that people go to film school? Um, I think it depends. Um, I mean, I would highly recommend it myself just because I do feel like it was, I learned a lot of technical, mm. um, you know, technical things that, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know with the generation coming up, like if they just kind of, you know, uh, are born with like an iPhone and a hand or something, you know, like, but, you know, I think there still is something that's very, you know, meaningful, of course, depending on where you go, um, you know, about studying films. I mean, I was very glad that I had like this space of like having already studied all these films, like, because I knew all of these different you know, um, artistic films and like foreign films and like, I feel like yeah. I you know, seen so many and you learn so much from watching different, you know, even things that come from different decades or whatever. And, um, you know, so those, those are really great classes to take if you can. And then, you know, yeah, learning like film production. I think it was, it was super helpful for me just to understand, mm. like, how do you like something? Like, even though I'm not a cinematographer, it's like, Sure. You know, you you get to understand like all the different um, all the different jobs and and you know facets that go into making a film, like especially like a fiction film. You know, mm. so um, so yeah. I mean, I would recommend it, but if you feel like you know getting onto a set and you um, are able to do that, I mean, I would encourage that simultaneously with going to film school is like also trying to like maybe get onto a couple of you know somebody else if, if there's like a bigger um or even like an indie film 
you know, going on, just like, you know, mm. the FDA or something, you know, like that's yeah. such good experience, you know? So yeah, that's, I guess that's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And I suppose that, that that's fine. <laughs> I suppose it helps too now, like with you making these films like paper geese, like having that those film production classes and everything where you it's like you said, it's essentially you and a skeleton crew and, because you, even though you're not a cinematographer and you took class and you can light stuff, you have the ability to, to make these things, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it also really gives you um, the ability to communicate well, like what you sure. want, like from something specifically, like, you know, to the cinematographer, to the, you know, costume designer, to the set designer, like, you know, you kind of, build up this vocabulary and you you um can more easily you know just communicate your mm. vision to those people right I think. yeah did uh did they teach you about how to <laughs> shoot in hospitals i just have that written down i was gonna ask did you shoot <laughs> in an actual hospital <laughs> well actually we did not um it's funny because this is the second like film short film that I've made that like has a hospital in it um uh so what we did is actually I mean we shot almost everything in Fargo and then like in this small town like out, outside of Fargo that's in Minnesota called Sabin and um we I definitely pulled the personal strings because it was like this uh so my I don't know. It's like when you grow up in Fargo, it's like kind of, you do have like a community and you feel like people mm -hmm. know each other. So, um, so my brother was really good friends with this kid whose dad, um, was, is a plastic surgeon and actually his father was a plastic surgeon. So they had this like plastic surgery, like clinic that they have, like, you know, it's nothing big. It's nothing fancy. It's just, you know, um, you know, a couple of ORs or a couple of surgery, you know, uh, rooms and then, you know, like a couple of other rooms and things like that. So it was very bare bones, but, um, yeah, we were able to get him to let us shoot there, um, for free even, which oh. like really crazy. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, like, and it ended up being perfect because it looked like, I mean, it was, because it wasn't fancy, like, it wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, it, it just, even you'll see in, like, the exam room, like, the table doesn't look new, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, it's like, it looks almost like just, like, a high piano bench or something, <laughs> you know, so, like, yeah. and that's something that, like, you know, new hospitals wouldn't have, and, uh, and mm -hmm. so, yeah, we got very, very lucky with that. We had also t thought about the University of Minnesota has, um, you know, they have a medical school. And so they mm. utilize some of their old, like, medical facilities for teaching mm. and training. And so, you know, they also offered, they were like, oh, yeah, sure. Like, just let us know when you want to come in. You, you know, it's surprising, really, actually, like, how many people are, you know, either willing to let you shoot somewhere or they're excited about it. Like, some people are really excited. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, Especially, you know, if, you, if they don't have, you know, filming going there all the time. Mm -hmm. Like in New York, it's like people are like, oh my God, this is so annoying. <laughs> like, you know, like I have to yeah. walk around this set. Like, you know, mm -hmm. and, and like LA, I'm sure it's the same. Like it, you must have to pay for like everything. But like when yeah. you're out kind of, you know, um, further away from those yeah. meccas, you're, you know, you, you, it's a fun thing. It's like, a, a, like, you know, an interesting thing for them to have you know something like that so yeah yeah <laughs> they're like oh you want to put us in a movie yeah great whatever yeah, you want <laughs> exactly yeah i'll be an extra like you know <laughs> yeah. like there's you know um the guy who who like uh lent us the truck with that red truck mm. um you know we ended up finding him because my sister just happened to like work in the same like office building as this guy who owns these like two old trucks and like one was blue and one was red 
and you know we we're trying to decide the color and then we realized that the blue one was like stick shift and we're like eh, that's not gonna work so because the actor definitely did not know how to you know drive stick shift so so we used the red one and it ended up being really nice because it like really popped mm-hmm. you know like that that color really popped popped off um, yeah you know and on on the screen so um so yeah and like that guy was super excited he was like oh my gosh i'm gonna tell all my friends like that my truck is in this movie and you know he's like really excited hopefully it gets into the fargo film festival so yeah you know um uh yeah that would be that would be great because i think everybody you know that was involved was just like really excited about it yeah and that's i mean that's i love that stuff and that's kind of what to me is special about you know these smaller films just you put so much effort into it and it is such like you really feel the the collaboration because you know it is just on you and a couple people and then you know you you rely on on those people quite a bit it's fun to this is like the little engine that could you know and and you make it all the way through to the end so um but loyal listeners please go check out paper geese showing at the south dakota film festival through the 25th go to south dakota film fest.org and check it out and elizabeth thank you so much for coming on the show um did you have anything you wanted to plug before we get out of here um i don't well yeah it it will be going to a couple other festivals so um i think the the montana international film festival may be finished already with their screenings but then Mm -hmm. it also will be at the fulton film festival with in person um that's in england though i mean so uh and also be it will also be online there um and then it'll be in buffalo um buffalo in buffalo new york um the buffalo international film festival um and then uh there's a couple more lake county which is uh around chicago and it'll be playing in person there and um and then yeah like the latest one that we um know of is is going to be playing in Uppsala, um sweden so we're ex- excited right. for that one too so yeah That's lots awesome. of places to yeah, well, yeah. I'm I'm excited. Uh, that I hope that it so it much. picks up some steam, and yeah, for sure, it's it's really wonderful. So, loyal listeners, go check it out. Um, as always, you can find me on Twitter at Luke Larson eighty nine. Find this podcast at L Squared Podcast on Twitter, on Instagram at L Two Podcast on Facebook. Uh, we're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Um, thank you again, Elizabeth, so much. Thank and, you. Uh, thank until you. Until next time, me. absolutely.